Hi, this is Needlepointers.com. Today I'd like to show you how to make these jelly roll mug rugs. These mug rugs can be made from a jelly roll. The jelly roll contains fabrics from a specific line of fabrics and usually gives you a couple of each fabric in the fabric line. They're usually two and a half inch wide strips by the width of the fabric which is around 42 inches. You can make six tops for these jelly roll mug rugs from five jelly roll strips. And then you would need one binding strip for each mug rug. So that would be 11 strips from your jelly roll to make six mug rugs. You will also need some fat quarters or some yardage to use for the backing. If you're making a set of six mug rugs, you would need two fat quarters for, eat for the six mug rugs. You will also need some pellon or batting, quilt batting, to put in between the layers. This is a great project to use your leftover batting. So let's get started with this project. From your jelly roll, you will need to audition some fabrics and decide which ones, which strips you're going to put together into your mug rug. The jelly roll I used for my mug rugs was from Deb Strain's Believing Yourself line and it has all these different B type fabrics and stuff so I would lay them out sort of like this so that I could audition them to get an idea of what my mug rugs would look like in the end. So this is what I'm going to use for my next mug rugs that I'm going to show you how to make. And so to start this project we will sew together the three strips together into one big long strip and then we'll subcut it into sections which then we will add the side strips onto it. So let's go over to the sewing machine and sew these strips together. Take your first two strips and put them right side together, right sides together along the long lining up the long edges and then with a white or neutral thread in your machine stitch with a one quarter inch seam allowance along the whole long edge. Okay, so there's the first two strips sewn together. I'm going to open it up and then add the other strip one. Next, I will go over to the ironing board and I will press the seams to one side. Okay, so I have the three strips all pressed nicely. Next I will cut off the selvages. And subcut this into seven inch sections. So we're gonna have seven inch in the middle. So over here is my 10 inch mark. So I'll put my ruler at 17 and so cut. This will give me six seven inch sections. The next step is to sew the two side strips onto the main each of the main pieces. So I'll take this over to my sewing machine, put the put the strip right sides together with the side of the mug rug and so then I'll cut cut it off at the bottom here you know at the edge so that I only have that much and then I can continue and do the next one and keep using the same strip to do all of them and I will do the same thing on the other side after the two strips are all sewn on then I will go to the ironing board and iron the seams towards the this strip towards the strip the side strips and 
and iron the whole thing flat. So I'll come back after I've done all that. If you would like more detailed instructions on these steps or a photo tutorial, please go to our website in the iCard or the link in the description of the video and we'll have more details on there. Here are my finished mug rug tops and on the back you can see I press the seams one direction and then the side seams I press towards the side strips. The next two steps are to cut a piece of quilt batting to be the size, size of the mug rug, the finished mug rug, which is six and a half by 11. At least that's the size of mine. I would measure yours just to be sure you ended up with the same size as me. And then also cut a piece of backing fabric the same size as the mug rug. So, top. So I'll come back once I have these things cut and then we'll go to the next step which is quilting. So here I have my backing fabric facing down, my batting fabric on top, and then my mug rug top fabric on layered up right side up. So you can see here's the back and the, the next step is to add some quilting to your mug rug to hold the layers together. Now you can do as much or as little quilting as you like but there are other options and here I'll just show these quickly. If you would like to see them in more detail and closer up pictures you can um, go to our website page that I discussed before. So this one just has a single line through the center of each one of the strips going each direction. This one, I put a line of stitching on each side of each one of the line of the seams. So there's a, on both sides. This one is diagonal lines across the center, and then notice that the they're opposite diagonal across the side. I kind of like that one a lot. And this one is simply diagonals across the whole thing uh, evenly. So you just have them all across. For the quilting, you want to make sure in your bobbin that you put a bobbin thread that correlates with your background fabric. And you want a for, you know top thread to correlate with your, you know, to go with whatever design you have here. I used a variegated yellow thread for my um, quilting on these. And I will do the same on these. So I will be back after I have these all quilted. Alright, so I now have the quilting done on the tops of each of the different mug rugs. So I have and I pretty much just did the same patterns I showed you earlier. And the final step to finish your mug rug is to bind it. So because we have these nice uh, jelly roll strips, basically you'll need one jelly roll strip to bind each one of your mug rugs. So just pick a coordinating jelly roll strip that you want to use for the binding and then we will put it on. And I will show you how to put that on. I do have another tutorial on how to do this kind of binding. And again, it will be in that a link in the Oops. website. The first step is pick your strip and then um, and then at your iron, fold it in half. Fold it and iron it in half like this. And then we'll go over to the sewing machine and sew it on. To bind the mug rug, we take the strip that has been folded together, wrong sides together, and ironed. I usually start on one of the sides because it's not as obvious where it won't draw your eye as much when you are looking at it later because there'll be a little spot where you where you connect it at the end. 
So lay your piece on the one side. Now you want to leave a tail of say two or three inches free on the side. So because we'll use that to join them together, the two sides, the two ends together as one later. So I'm going to do a quarter inch seam and I'm starting most of the way down, remember, remembering to leave my few couple two to three inches free. So so oh oh and we want to be doing this on the back of your we want to be sewing it onto the back of your mug rug, not on the front, which I was just about ready to do. So put it put it on there quarter inch seam and we're going to sew towards the corner when we get to this corner stop one quarter inch from the end from the edge of the mug rug my foot here has marks on it for a quarter inch so it's very helpful for this. It has three marks so I can tell when I'm a quarter inch from the edge. Turn, pivot, and turn and sew into the corner. This is how we're going to make our mitered corners. Next, fold this up on the 45 degree angle. So you see you have 45 from the corner. And then Fold this down so that it's even with the edge. The fold is even with the edge. Next, the important part is start stitching one quarter inch away from the edge. And again, my foot has a mark at a quarter inch so I can tell where to start. If yours doesn't have that, just you know, estimate it and start from there. Don't forget to back tack a bit and sew down to the next corner. And you'll repeat that same process on all four corners. Okay, this is the second corner. Um, stopping a quarter inch from the edge. Turn, sew into the corner. Take it out, fold it on the 45, then fold it down. With the folded edge even with the, the top, the edge of the fabric. This binding method can be used for anything from small things like this all the way up to large quilts. And I'm going to continue to do the other two corners and I'll be back in a couple minutes. Okay, I finished the fourth corner and I'm heading towards where I have my uh, extra fabric on the last side. What you will want to do is sew down and stop leaving, you know, a few a few, few inches in between. So don't sew all the way right up. So in order, now we have these two pieces and we want to make one, you know, binding. So what you can do is Hold these pieces together, or fold them together so you can see. I have it folded, each one up together. And I'm pinching it where they come together. I marked with my pen 
where that spot was where they caught the two the two pieces should join together and now I'm going to lay it flat on my sewing machine and I'm going to sew right on that line but I'm going to remove that pin before I actually get set. So before I cut it off I want to just check and make sure. See, now it's flat. Next we want to trim off these, this extra fabric. And what I usually do is trim it on an angle and I leave some extra um, on the inside because this is the side that's going to be showing on the front and we want to be able to tuck in the corners and so that they're hidden. So the easiest way to do that is to cut it on an angle because that also gets rid of some of the bulk. So there's the cut and I'm going to open the seam up so it's flat and then now I'm going to finish the seam here. The next step is we're going to flip the binding to the front. So what I usually do is flip it around and I pull on it a little bit and I try to push the corners into the corners. Next I'm going to turn it to the back and I'm going to take it over to the ironing board and I will iron these flat, so flat and open, so it's nice and open. So I'll be back right after I do. Okay, so now I've ironed this flat. I didn't really iron the corners, I ironed the, the long side, the straight sides. The other thing I did was where I joined the two I flipped under the tips of the corners of that part that I, when I cut it on an angle. And this will just make sure that when we flip this over, wrap it around, that those corners won't like stick out here when we sew this down. So I like to get make sure they're out of the way. So the next step is to wrap this the binding around to the front and hold it in place. I love using these little binder type clips, quilt binding clips, to hold the binding in place. And I'll put a few on each side, you know, a few couple, two or three inches apart each one. And these are nicer to use than pins, you don't end up sticking yourself. And because it's a thicker, there's more layers and it's thicker, it, the binder clips type of clips work better. So just do the sides first and then we'll come back to the corners. Okay, so now we want to get nice mitered corners on the corners of our mug rug here. So with this method, it's pretty easy to make the miter corners. You just, one thing is, is that you want to make sure that when you're sewing around, you're going to sew off the edge of each of the corners instead of coming to, towards the folded side because you don't want it to flip up as you're trying to sew over it. So we want to, when we fold this, I want to make sure that I'm stitching going around this direction so that I go off of the edge instead of um, coming up to the edge that's folded and then maybe catch it in a funny way. So in order to get the mitered corner you just open it up and then basically push this flat from the, the second side and tuck it in and then fold over the other side. And you might need to just adjust it a little bit 
so that you get the nice mitered corner like that and then put your clip right on there so fold it down over and fold it over and clip and there we go so I have all four done so now you have a few choices on how to stitch down your binding for this one I'd use the serpentine stitch which is one of the special stitches on my sewing machine and I lengthened the stitch length so that it would meander back and forth across when you get to the corner with the serpentine stitch you just go into the corner do your pivot 90 degrees and then just continue and it'll it'll do some sort of little loop or cross over itself but don't worry about that it looks good no matter what happens there your other choice is to just do a straight stitch around and with this one though you want to make sure that your stitching is pretty straight so that you don't end up with some waves in there the other option you have is you can choose one of your fancy any if your machine has extra fancy stitches you could always choose one of those stitches and stitch around to hold down your binding so I usually start on one side or the other on one of the sides and go around so as I said stitch into the corner no matter which type of stitch you're doing you stitch to the side turn it 90 degrees and continue stitching and the mug row is finished and I'm going to continue making the rest of the mug rows that I have started and I will have quite a few of these now so here are all my finished jelly roll mug rows I hope you enjoyed learning how to make these jelly roll mug rugs and make some for yourself. These will make great gifts for the holidays. I plan to give these out along with our honey from our beehives. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to click the like button if you like this video. Leave your comments in the comments section and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Visit our website, needlepointers.com, and don't forget to sign up for our newsletter to keep up to date on all our new projects.